there ain't no such thing as an atheist. There ain't no such thing as an atheist. They don't exist. You may claim that you do not believe in a God. But, you do believe in a God, yourself. Because, Mr. Atheist, so-called, what is your standard of judgment? Hmm? It's you. Atheists don't exist. Okay? Let's define some terms, shall we? Reading from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. What is a theist? What is a theist? Okay. You want to see how the English language has been perverted by the Jesuit order? Get yourself a Webster's 1828 and look at a modern Webster's dictionary and see. God promised to preserve his word. And God chose English to preserve his word perfectly. But God has not made one claim whatsoever to perfectly preserve the English language in and of itself. Okay? He has pre preserved his word in English perfectly. Yes, you used the uh, authorized version to translate into other tongues. Not the Hebrew or the Greek. Which one? Okay? When you got these guys who say the originals, what do they mean? The original written by Moses. The original written by David. The original written by Paul or James and so on and so forth, right? That's what they mean. Guess what, cousin? Those don't exist. They have been long gone. What we have are copies upon copies upon copies, okay? So when you have some twit sporting my beautiful haircut coming around talking about the originals, he is making a reference onto what? The ones written by Moses, the ones written by David, the one was written by Nathan or whoever. Okay, that's what he's referring to. Those don't exist. And even the Jesuit scholars in every single cemetery school here in, the, in America, okay, they will even tell you that the originals don't exist. So, now get this reasoning here. Those who go to the Jesuit cemetery schools, and they're all uh, run by Jesuits, okay, what do they learn? They learn textual criticism. What is textual criticism? That's very simple. Very simple. What is textual criticism? Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent, Satan, we covered this in the previous video, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yea, hath God said. That is what textual criticism is. Okay? And when these people go to these cemetery schools, and some of you people who have gone to these cemetery schools and paid thousands and thousands of dollars and come out claiming to be an atheist, I feel for you. I do. Because Satan, through the Jesuit order, who runs all the cemetery schools, at least here in America, okay, uh, has destroyed your faith. Your faith is in yourself. Okay? It is. But the cemetery schools, what do they do? They say the originals. What is the one thing that all the cemetery schools, virtually all, are against? They're all against what? The authorized version. The Bibles that come out compare themselves to what? The authorized version. In the cemetery schools, what are they taught against? The authorized version. Okay? You need proof that this is what God has preserved? Look at the people who attack it. And then sit there and think, there must be something to this. Okay? But see, ultimately, the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. And see, that therein lies the subtlety of some of this knowledge that is available because it's through mental ascent where the spirit who is the Lord himself he is the one who will reveal to you the truth of his word okay 
You understand? So, you go to a cemetery school and you have any faith that might have been there destroyed with, yea, hath God said. And you claim to be an atheist. But I see a lot of, I haven't seen. I don't believe. I, 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 I. You see, dear friend, there is no such thing as an atheist. Because you are the standard of your own judgment. Now back in Genesis, back in Genesis chapter 3, okay? Here it is. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, disregard what God has said, okay? Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Man is incapable of truly knowing what is good and what is evil. The laws of God are written in our hearts, yes, but we as man fall short of true judgment. Look at today. Look at today here in America with the trans thing going on and open sodomy and pedophilia being pushed and promoted by Disney. Oh, boy. Okay. Look at what's going on today. There's atheism for you, okay? And atheists. Hmm? See, the promise was to, uh, not the, it was, you know, what Satan said, not the promise, excuse me. But what Satan said to Eve, ye shall be as gods. Only God knows what is truly right and is truly evil. And you know what? He tells you in his perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. But see, the Christians and the people that go to the Jesuit trained cemetery schools, you know, that are trained by Jesuits, run by Jesuits, they all come out with, yeah, hath God said, look at that Winger, Wagner idiot here on YouTube. Okay? Look at all these guys. Look at the, 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 the ones that go to these phallus houses. Okay? They go to a Jesuit school, Princeton, run by Jesuits. Moody, run by Jesuits. Dallas Theological Seminary, don't get me started. Pensacola Bible Institute, they're King James only. Yeah, but they have an idol of a man. Okay? They have a man as an idol. Okay? And don't you think for a moment that the blessed PBI is not overrun with Jesuits. Okay? From Satan comes, ye hath God said. Okay? From the Jesuits... Catholicism is continued, yea, hath God said. Okay? All right? So, he said to Eve, your eyes would be opened. You will be able to be your own God because you will be able to judge what is good and what is evil. Okay? And in Isaiah chapter 14, okay? I feel for you. For some of you atheists who had any faith that might have been growing, destroyed by the Jesuits, by yea hath God said. And they introduced to you, you know, the lexicons and the Greek. The Greek! Which one? You know the Nestle Milan is up to 28 or something like that? There are what, 18 editions of the Texas Receptus? Okay? Which one? Okay, the definical, definitive article the originals, they don't exist. They wore out. We have copies. So when you got some schmuck coming around saying the originals are, are the only ones that are inspired, but we don't have the originals, what is he saying? That we don't have God's perfect word. Well, how do you, how do you know? Well, you've got you to gotta go to the Jesuits to learn the Greek and, you know, the annuncials or whatever. Isn't that something? I don't blame some of you who claim to be atheists, who go through Jesuit training and come out having any faith that you might have had shot. I don't blame you. I don't. Okay? And dear man, I ain't preaching to you Christianity. I'm not. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered to the saints. All you people who want to hold on to that, that's your problem. Quit saying, well, it, didn't use, it doesn't matter what it used to be. What is it right now? Kayate. Kayate. 
about that, please. Okay? You want to go on saying Christian? That that's your problem. That's but that's between you and the Lord. Okay? Is that going to send you to hell? No. But you know what? How do we distinguish? You know, so many people claim to be Christians, right? <laughs> I don't blame some of you who go through the ringer of the Jesuit and come out totally shot and destroyed in any kind of faith you had. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Because I see a lot of, well, I have no proof. I this, I that. Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? You will be like the Most High, right? God had, you know, for God doth know that the day ye eat thereof, question what God has said, do contrary to what God said, your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Where does that come from? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will. I have seen no proof of God. Stop. Okay. Sorry, brother, that was you. I forgot to turn up. One second. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, okay? Now, where were, where were we? I kind of lost my place because of that. Okay. For thou hast said, uh, verse 13 in Isaiah 14, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will be like God. I will be my own judge. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I say what is good and what is evil. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? Only God truly knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. Okay? Our morals that we are born with come from the Lord who created all mankind. Okay? He did. Your belief on that is irrelevant. When you die, you'll find out the hard way, and by then it's too late. Okay? Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. See, dear Mr. Atheist, and I have encountered polite, cordial, friendly atheists where I've had converse with, and I've even had some, these are few and far between, that are like, you know, Brad, you believe what you're saying? And you even try to live according to your belief. But that's, I don't choose that. Fine, dude. Fine. That, fine. I can coexist, as it were. You know, you stay over here, I'll stay over here, okay? If we cross paths, it's like, hey, how you doing? How's your mother? Okay, that kind of thing. Fine. I have more respect for someone like that than some of these other idiot atheists. Okay, like that Aaron Ra guy, or the guy who looks like Gene Hoagland. Okay, never mind. All right? But nonetheless, you claim to be an atheist. First of all, first of all, okay, what is a theist? From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Theism and theist. Theism. The belief or acknowledgement of the existence of a God, as a, opposed to atheism. Theism differs from deism, for although deism implies a belief in the existence of a God, yet it signifies in modern usage a denial of revelation, which theism does not. That's why we're not going to look at deism. Okay? Theist. One who believes in the existence of a God. Now, let's be honest. You atheists don't want to believe, and I don't blame you, in the God of Christianity. Okay? You don't. I don't believe in the God of Christianity either. One God and three persons? Uh, no, but that's insanity. That's Satanism. Okay? The God of Christianity is not the God of the scriptures, the saints that was once delivered onto the saints. Okay? I don't blame you for not wanting to believe in the God of Christianity. Okay? All right? 
the God of the Scriptures, the God of the way, as it was originally called. Okay, the Scriptures can uh, verify that. We are saints, okay, of the Church of God, the Church of the Living God. Okay, all right. Let's see, what is a Christian? Someone who believes in Christ. More on that in a minute. Okay, but a theist is someone who believes in the existence of a God. And you atheists, you don't want to believe in the God of Christianity. <laughs> Bravo! I don't either. But see, the God of the scriptures, the authorized version, Jesus Christ, who is. Okay, that's a different story. You don't want to believe in the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. Okay? Ultimately. But you're not an atheist. Because what is your standard of judgment? You are your standard of judgment. Uh, Jeremiah 44, real quickly. Okay, Jeremiah 44. Okay, Jeremiah 44. Again, here's the result of being your own God. Jeremiah 44, verses 16 and 17. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You will be like the Most High. Okay? To burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. Before you came along talking to us about what God wants us to do and what sin is, we were doing good because we were our own gods. Okay? Now, what is an atheist? Okay? See, you put an A in front of it, it changes it. Like, you know, muse. Muse means to think. You have an amusement park, a park, a place you go where not to think. Okay? Atheist. Atheist. Let me find it here. Okay. Atheist. Atheism and atheist. We're going to read out of Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Atheism. The disbelief of the existence of a God or supreme intelligent being. Intelligent being. Atheism is a ferocious system that leaves nothing above us to excite awe nor around us to awaken tenderness, Rob Hall. Atheist, one who disbelieves the existence of a God or supreme intelligent being. Atheist, atheistical, believing or denying, disbelieving or denying the being of a supreme God. Okay? Now, if you were a true atheist, then you wouldn't even trust yourself. But, see, right there, supreme intelligent being. Have you ever heard of Aaron Ra, Gene Hoagland look-alike? Okay, Gene Hoagland, one of the greatest drummers ever. Never mind, okay? Um, have you ever heard him talk? He's a pretty mean individual. Um, he is. He is. Um, he knows a lot about biology, chemistry, all that kind of stuff. Um, he, he does. He's pretty <laughs> smart in the world like that. But, see, a guy like that, where it says, Supreme intelligent being, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Your own intelligence, your own wisdom is your God. You are your own God. See, we saints, we don't... Trust in ourselves, God forbid. Okay? But what do some say? Well, science is my God. Science. Okay? Science. Science in the scriptures. Daniel. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. Verses... Oh, verses 3 on to verse 5. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, 
the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science. Well, the Hebrew, shut up! You don't need the Hebrew. You don't need the Greek. Which one? Okay? You don't need any of that. Okay? You have knowledge and understanding science. So wait. Knowledge and understanding knowledge? Hmm. But as we're going to see in Webster's, science is equated onto a knowledge. Okay? Alright? And there is true science and false science. Okay? Something that you can test, observe, and prove. If you do something and another guy does it, backing up your, that's true science. Okay? True science. There's a lot of fake science, such as <laughs> evolution. We're, we're, not gonna, we're, we're addressing atheism. Okay? That's what we're addressing. Never mind the fairy tale of evolution. Okay? That's, that's crazy. Atheism. That's what we're addressing. Okay? So children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored, and skillful in all wisdom, fear of the Lord, and cunning in knowledge, wisdom, knowledge, okay, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, and of the wine which he drank, so nursing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So science is actually mentioned in the scriptures. And now we go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verses, where's my place? 20 on to verse 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. And people will say, well, the Greek means, shut up, we don't need the Greek, okay? Which some professing have heard concerning the faith, grace be with thee, amen. Now, this is not opposed to science in and of itself, but science falsely so-called, such as evolution, okay? Such as evolution. We're not going off on that, okay? But is science a knowledge? Yes. Yes, it is. But there is what is called a false knowledge okay there are two wisdoms let me re remember that this is kind of off the cuff this is off the cuff kind of video um it is uh just just so you know obviously as you can tell james chapter 3 verses 13 on to verse 18 who is as a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Okay? And atheism denies the, uh, of a supreme intelligent being. But see, you are your own God. You are your own standard of judgment. You are your own uh, supreme intelligent being. There is no such thing as an atheist. Dear atheist, you are your own standard of judgment. You decide what is right and what is wrong. Like from that disgusting movie with the uh, Joker, the Joker, you know, with the Phoenix guy, at that scene where it's like, you decide what is right and what is wrong. Just like you decide what is funny and not. Okay? Yes, I saw that. I, brethren was like, you know, people not you know we're saying Brad, check this out. What do you think of it? It's like oh, horrifying. Okay. Anyway, anyway, enough of that. Okay, who is as the wise man, endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. There we see wisdom and knowledge, two different things. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, which gives you knowledge, knowing. Okay. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Ye hath God said. Ye hath God said. The originals. Shut your mouth. 
Cyanidicus and Vaticanus, you would defile your own person, spirit, soul, and body if you decided to use those even for wipes betwixt your buttocks. You would defile even your own self. Okay, those aren't the originals. The originals don't exist. So if the originals don't exist, then we don't have a perfect copy of God's Word, do we? But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, what wisdom is this? Descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, by the senses, devilish. Yea, hath God said? Ye shall be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Earthly. Dirt. Remember, Satan was cursed to... You know, the serpent, excuse me, who was, was Satan, uh, was cursed to eat dust all the days of his life. We're made of dust. Yeah. Okay. All right. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Peace, not compromise. Not compromise. Okay. And of course, while we're on this train, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This was not the video that uh, about Job, obviously. This is, uh, like I said, off the cuff, kind of winging it as we go here. Got some notes, but 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 16. But God hath revealed them unto us by his capital S Spirit, the Lord himself. Revealed unto who? People who are actually saved. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God, and the Lord is that Spirit. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? The spirit of man. What's the spirit of man? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the capital S, spirit of God. God himself. Okay? Now we have received not the spirit of the world, which is that spirit of Antichrist, to replace and be against. What is atheism? You are your own God. You're against Christ, and you're exalting yourself as your own God. <laughs> if anything, you're claiming to be an atheist, you're actually anti-Christ. More on Christ in a minute. Okay? Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Note the lowercase s there. In that con context, it's the impartation thereof. Okay? That we might know the things that are freely given, see, it defines itself, given to us of God, which things we also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teacheth. Apologetics, hermeneutics, who's Herman? Okay, um, all these other terms, you know, that come from the Jesuits and philosophy. More on that in a little bit. But which... The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, earthly, sensual, dev devilish, not regenerated, not saved. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God. But of course not. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual <laughs> judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Ask Aaron Ra about that. Yeah. But we have the mind of Christ. Yeah, because Christ lives in us. Doesn't mean we're Christ. No. But science now. From Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Check this out. Check this out. Science. Okay. Uh, i got to find it really quick. <laughs> I have not marked this one yet. 
I haven't marked it yet. One second. Science from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. In a general sense, knowledge or certain esoteric, privileged, hmm? I, I get that confused, esoteric and exoteric. One is for the in crowd and one is for the populace, okay? In a general sense, knowledge or certain knowledge, the comprehension or understanding of truth or facts by the mind, the science of God must be perfect. Mental assent, okay? In philosophy, a collection of the general principles or lending truths relating to any subject. Pure science, as the mathematics, is built on self-evident truths. One plus one is two. What is it? Two plus two is 36? No, two plus two is four. And you have these, um, some of these woke idiots who say that math is racist. That, hey, maybe two plus two isn't actually four, it's five. I'm not making that up. I'm not making that up. There are people actually out there who say that kind of nonsense. That math is racist or whatnot. That you can't, it's like, well, now granted, I don't like math at all. Uh, that was my worst subject. I can't, you know, I run out of fingers and toes. But, you know, when you got people nowadays, these woke idiots, those, those people are stupid. If you're woke, you're stupid. There's no nice way to say it. You're, you're an idiot. Go away, okay? But there are people that are saying that math is, you know, well, how do we know that 2 plus 2 is actually not 5? It's hard to deal with people like that. It's really hard to deal with people like that. It's hard to witness some people like that. Okay? When you come across someone that deceived, it's very hard to witness them. In my personal experience, it's like, you want a gospel? Okay. Have fun storming the castle. But the term science is also applied to other subjects founded on generally acknowledged truths as metaphysics or on experiment and observation as chemistry, C-H-I-M-I-S-T-R-Y, and natural philosophy, or even to the assemblage of the general principles of an art, as the science of agriculture, the science of navigation. Arts relate to practice, as painting and sculpture. A principle in science is a rule in art. Th uh, number three, art derived from precepts or built on principles. Science perfects genius, Dryden. Any art or species of knowledge, interesting phrase, no science doth make known the first principles on which it buildeth, Hooker. One of the seven liberal branches of knowledge, viz, grammar, logic, rhetoric, arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music, Bailey Johnson. Note, authors have not always been careful to use the terms art and science with due discrimination and precision. Music is an art as well as a science. That's true. In general, an art is that which depends on practice or performance, such as the art of deception, which so many of these Christians are good at. Okay? <clears throat> In general, an art is that which depends on practice or performance, and science that which depends on abstract or speculative principles. The theory of music is a science, the practice of it an art. Okay? So when you say science is your God, knowledge, huh? What knowledge? Knowledge that comes from the Lord? Or that which is earthly, sensual, devilish. It's 99% of the time with people who claim to be atheists. It's earthly, sensual, devilish. You're not an atheist. 
those do not exist. Okay? They don't. They don't. You don't believe on the Jesus Christ of the Scriptures. You because of Rome, because of the yea hath God said, and these poor people who get screwed up going to a Jesuit trained cemetery, getting Jesuit trained by, you know, in their cemetery schools. You got these pastors in the phallus houses. They got the piece of paper because it's their job. They need the piece of paper to get the job. Okay? And they mwah, 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 kiss people's behinds so they can keep their job. Okay? They're trained by Jesuits. Every one of them that I've ever encountered come out, yeah, that's it. Okay? You're against that, you atheists, so called. Okay? Good. I'm against that. But see, the Christ of the Scriptures. Christ! Well, what is a Christian? Someone who believes in Christ. Which one? Well, there's only one, really. There is only one God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. But Satan is giving out many Christs. Okay, which one? Okay? There is more than one Christ being presented to you. You, you so-called atheists and even Muslims can, it's like, which, which Jesus? The one that's still on the cross? Huh? The one that came to America? Huh? Huh? The one that's Michael, the archangel? Huh? The one that, you know, by abracadabra, hocus pocus, he's a cookie? Or uh, his blood's in a wine glass? Huh? Which Jesus? Christ. What does Christ mean? Go to Matthew chapter 16. You don't need the Greek. Which one? The original. That doesn't exist. So remember, remember, the originals are inspired. You mean the ones that were written by David and stuff? Yeah. Those don't exist. Well, I know that. So, there is no perfect word of God, right? Well, we get, shut up. Get out of here. Go away. Go away. I would have more respect for one of these Christians if they would at least say, I believe like the ESV is perfect. Okay, let's, let's check it out upon this. But see, they, 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 they don't even do that. Do they? What's their standard? Themselves. Or a fictitious thing that no longer exists. That they're like, ah, you know? But Christ, what does is, what is, what is Christ mean? Okay? Go to, uh, there we could go off on this for a while, but Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 16. Pay attention. When Jesus, Jesus, Jehovah saves, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John, John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Shimon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Now look at me, look at Scripture. The son of the living God. Now, in that video addressing that idiot uh, lying fart, um, we we cover this thing uh, about how Jesus is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient, and that kind of stuff. Okay, that will be in the description box as well. Okay, thou art the Christ. Hmm. And also Matthew chapter twenty-two. Matthew chapter 22, the Christ, okay? Matthew 22, verses 41 on to verse 46. When the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Huh? Because what do some Hebrews do? 
uh, Yeshua ben Joseph, uh, Yosef, right? Jesus, son of Joseph. Joseph was not the father of Jesus, okay? He wasn't, okay? And you read a Bible, it says that. You, you uh, poor atheists who were destroyed in the Jesuit uh, cemetery schools, you know that. You know that the Bible say that, that Joseph was his daddy, right? Mm -hmm. And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Son of God! The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, and Mary was with child of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. Okay? Son of man. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Son of God. God manifest in the flesh. Son of David. King of kings. Lord of lords. Son of David is a reference unto him being king of kings. Lord of lords. We, we go over that in the one video uh, that Jesus is omniscient. Okay? All right. But now let's go to Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, there are exceptions to this, where you got whack jobs going around. Hi, I'm Jesus Christ. Hi. Hey, officer, right, we got it. Hi, hi, I, this guy with the Mason badge and a gun wants to talk to you and take you to a nice padded room and give you some Prozac, okay? Okay? But today, are people going, ah, I'm Christ? No. Because, well, you would do exactly that. You'd be like, okay, hey, officer, come here. We got a, we got a, we got a touched individual here. What's going on? Hmm? Uh, while in Matthew 24, which is describing, which is about the time of Jacob's trouble, not for us today doctrinally, remember that, you got to write it by the word of truth, 23 and 24, then if any man say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And elect in that context is the Hebraic Jewish people from Shem, not Ham or Japheth. Okay? Okay. All right? Now, let's go to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verses 62 on to verse 68. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Jesus just said there, uh, yep, that's what I am. Okay? He, Jesus never said, I am God. He didn't need to. He said, before Abraham was, I am. And same, pretty much the same thing happened then to what happens here. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. These guys weren't going to believe. Again, if he would have come down the, from the cross, it's like, oh, hi! They would have stoned him. Okay? Okay, why? Because they were their own gods. And the God, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Mashiach, the Anointed One, Christ. Okay? They didn't want as prophesied in Scripture. But what further have we have we of witness? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. Like <laughs> I am. Jesus said, I am. Unless you believe I am He, the Father. Okay? The same rocket science. 
All right. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palm of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ. Who is he that smote thee? Mocking the Father. Okay? All right? Now, let's go to the most obvious and plain text to show you what Christ actually means. Okay? You kind of figured it out, haven't you? But let's go to the obvious. Okay? Luke chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Pay attention. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And while we're at it, Luke chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 23, where our Lord is quoting Isaiah 61. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 on to verse 23. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Now some of you might be saying, didn't he leave something out? Didn't he leave something out, right? You might be kind of versed in the scriptures yourself. Okay? Isaiah 61 Okay, Isaiah 61. Okay. Isaiah 61, verses 1 on to verse 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 19 in Luke 4. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20 and he closed the book. And verse 2 in Isaiah 61. And the day of the vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You might be thinking, well, wait a minute. We just saw in Luke. He stopped before what? And the day of vengeance. Listen. When the Lord, Isaiah 53, you pause this video. Stop. Pause the video. Read Isaiah 53, okay? Read Isaiah 52 and 53. They go, they go together like peas and carrots, like peanut butter and jelly between the bread of life. Thank you, fledgling of pride. Thank you for that. I seriously mean that, okay? But, I can't see that. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and he closed the book. He was sent here at his first coming to die. He came as a lamb. God shall provide himself a lamb. Himself a lamb. The Bibles mess that up. The scriptures don't. Himself a lamb. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. The son of David. Okay? Get it? Yeah. He came as a lamb. At his second coming, he's going to be the lion. That's why he stopped there. That's why he closed the book. Because he came as a lamb. 
to be an offering for sin. That's why he stopped to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's why he didn't mention vengeance at that time because he was there offering the kingdom of heaven onto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? Let's continue. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. It's a bold statement. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? <laughs> and he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Let's read verse 24. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Okay? Christ means anointed one. Are there not many Christs today? And think about the charismatics. That devil, uh, David Wilkerson. Okay? Was David Wilkerson a saved man? I doubt it. I doubt it. To doubt it. Hey, if we get up there and David Wilkerson is there, it's like, hey, Lord, can I, like like I say with Luther, if we get up there and Luther's there, it's like, hey, Lord, can I have some of that humble pie and can I eat some of that crow? Let me, let me, let me pack it on, okay? I don't think David Wilkerson was a saved man. But David Wilkerson would make statements like, the anointing is upon me. Now, we have an anointing from the Lord, the Lord himself, yes. But think about it. When you hear the Charismatics, the Pentecostals saying, the anointing is upon me. Number one, they're going under the Old Testament principle that the Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, come and go. They don't believe in eternal security. They don't rightly divide the word of truth anyway. Okay, But what is he saying? That he's a Christ, isn't he? Aren't there a lot of anointed ministries out there? Hmm? Anointed ones? And that man of sin, the son of perdition, himself is going to be an anointed one anointed by who? Satan. Okay? So, Mr. Atheist, you are your own God. Your judgment proceeds from yourself. You are your own anointed one. You know, Mr. Atheist's Mrs. Atheists, um, every single one of you believe in a God, yourself. Your mind is your own supreme intelligent being. You decide what is good, what is evil. Okay? That, that, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Okay? It's just the way it is. You are your own God. You are your own God. You don't want to believe in the Christ of Christianity. Good. Good. I don't believe in the Christ of Christianity. I don't. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ of the authorized version of the scriptures. The Christ who is of who is the faith once delivered unto the saints. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. There's a very big difference. See, your thing is coming from Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Rome, the Jesuit order. Okay? And see, in Scripture, Wisdom, fear of the Lord, is comparable unto a beautiful woman. Remember, the woman is the glory of the man. Okay? And for you women out there, okay, I gotta tell you this, okay? Women were made for man, not man for women. Okay? Well, one second, please. Sorry about that, okay? The woman of Revelation chapter 17, the harlot, 
which is Roman Catholicism, is being used of Satan to teach many of you another Jesus. But the wisdom, the fear of the Lord, that is of the Lord himself, okay, that is beyond rubies. That wisdom, the fear of the Lord, like I said, the wisdom of the, uh, the wisdom, the fear of the Lord in Scripture is compared unto a beautiful woman. Beyond comparison. Okay? I'm going to tell you about two women in Scripture that signify this. Judges chapter 17. Now, you got to remember, you people out there who have children in schools run by Jesuits, even the religious ones, and for Christ's sake, get your children out of school. Get them out of school. Kids are being taught evolution, the uh, woke mentality and philosophy. Okay, get your children out of school. Teach them yourselves. I know a great textbook where to begin. Okay, but Judges chapter 17. The scriptures in Proverbs 22 Verse 16 tells us that if you train up a child in the way he should... Uh, let's go there before we go to Judges, okay? Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. One verse, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. What are these children being trained up in right now? Yea, hath God said, number one, no God, evolution that evil is good and good is evil, that there are 10 genders, okay, that a 12-year-old who was born a male can actually decide and think that they're actually a female. That's, that's Satanism. That's, that's devilish. Okay, that's earthly, sensual devilish. Okay? Contrasted to that, contrasted to that, we have 2 Timothy. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 17. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. All these, yea, hath God said people that are coming out. A lot of these evolutionists. A lot of these atheists. There's no such thing as an atheist. Okay? But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain Ba, 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 babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Train up a child in the way he shall go. Hmm? How are these children being trained today? How are they being brought up? Have you talked to a child coming out of one of these indoctrination centers? Huh? Go up to a child. Not all of them are that stupid. But, you know, for example, name one concentration camp. Was there a religious element to the Civil War? <laughs> Was Hitler a Catholic? Okay. <laughs> All right. How many genders are there? Okay. All right. You know, children are being indoctrinated for the coming of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay. They are not being educated. They are being... Some of you atheists who have gone through the Jesuit cemetery schools, okay? You have been indoctrinated. You are your own God, okay? You are your own God. Drop the thing you don't believe in a God. 
Yes, you do. Yourself. Okay? Yourself. You are your own God. But, okay, Judges chapter 17. Judges chapter 17. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursedest, and spakest of also in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he had restored the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now therefore will I restore it unto thee. So this mother with silver made a graven image, a molten image. Hmm. You know, <coughs> in the book of, well, let's read, let's, let's continue to verse 6. Yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder, who made thereof a graven image and a molten image. And they were in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had a house of gods. His mother was the one who trained up this Micah, evidently. And with what Micah returned on to his mother, his mother made a graven image. Turn up a child in the way he will go. Okay? And the man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. He shall be as God's own good and evil. You know, like I said, Eve was made for Adam. Okay? The word woman means taken out of man or of man. Okay? That doesn't make you any lesser, okay? Women can bring children into this world, okay? Women can give birth. They can be with child, okay? Praise the Lord for a woman. I love a woman. I, I love a woman so much that I married her, okay? <laughs> All right? All right? That doesn't make you lesser. But however, women are the weaker vessel, okay? And I want you to consider something, okay? Go to 1 Timothy. Go to 1 Timothy. I've been called, uh, what, what, what's that word? Um, what is that word? Misogynist. I've been called a misogynist. <laughs> no, I'm not a misogynist. Uh, uh, my, my third best friend. Best friend, Jesus. My wife, Brother Alexander B. Hartley. Okay? Um, but he's even been called a misogynist. No. The scripture is very specific about woman. But I want you, I want you to look at this. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 15. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. This is why that wicked, feminazi, Satanist, Christy Burke hates this. Because Paul's talking about what the Lord actually wants women to be like. Okay? In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness, with good works. Let the women, let the woman, excuse me, learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. We won't go off on that. Cold. Very cold. Okay? That will be in the description box. Okay? We talked about that quite a bit. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. 
But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Eve was deceived, not Adam. Think about this. In Genesis chapter 2, we're not going to go there. In Genesis chapter 2, God brought all these things to Adam. Adam saw God create things in the Garden of Eden. Okay, the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 2, which atheists and evolutionists like to say it's a contradiction. It's not a contradiction, dude. He's just talking about what's going on in the Garden of Eden. Okay, Adam witnessed God creating. Eve didn't. Eve didn't. So Satan went to Eve. They have God said. Adam witnessed God creating things. Eve did not. So who does Satan go to? Who does Satan go to to destroy the family uh, structure? And you know what's so stupid about the feminazi thing today, especially here in America? Women are being ruled over by women who are actually now men. <laughs> That's not funny. But these feminazis about women this, women that, today, especially in America, are being overruled, being controlled by men who are pretending to be women. Crazy, man. Crazy. But see, train up a child in the way he will go, where he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And in here in Judges chapter 17, Micah's mother. And because of Micah's mother, mm, he had a house of gods. He had a house of gods. And he consecrated one of his own sons to be his priest, his son who wouldn't dare do anything to upset his father, right? Think about it. Here comes Mystery Babylon. You read Proverbs chapter 7. You know, loud and stubborn. She lieth at wait at every corner. You got a German Catholic church. You have a mess of death up there. A mess of death. Yes, you heard me right. Okay. Uh, you have a, all these phallus houses. On every corner. Okay? Yea, hath God said. Alright? Now let's continue. In Judges 17, verses 7 on, verse 13. Now check this out. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite. And he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, as he, as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah. Remember, the Levites had no land allotted to them, but within the tribes of Israel, they were allotted land. So someone might be saying, like, this guy is from Bethlehem, Judah, but he's a Levite. He's of the family of Judah, but he's a Levite. Remember, the Levites were not, the Lord was their inheritance. So he could be of the tribe of Levi, but yet equated, come out of Judah. That's how that works, okay? And Micah, oh wait, and Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto, the, unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah. I go to sojourn where I may find a place. I'm looking for a job, okay? And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest. I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year, and a suit of apparel, and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. Okay, you're going to pay me, clothe me, and feed me? To be a priest? Sir, sure. what do you want me to tell you? What I, okay, sure, fine. And of course, you continue reading in Judges, this very lineage of this uh, Levite would go on to mess up Dan. Okay? All right, that, that's a totally different thing. Let's keep going. And Le the Levite was content to dwell with the man. And the young man was unto him as one of his sons. 
And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, Now I know that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Now I know the Lord will do me good because I'm going to a phallus house where there is a preacher who has a $100,000 piece of paper on my wall. And the person is like, I think I've been called to preach. But you got to have the credentials. you got to go to an accredited Bible school and learn how to say, Yea, hath God said, and be trained by Jesuits. That will give you a job, maybe. <laughs> okay. And um, Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 on to verse 16. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And remember, in Peter, we are to desire, desire the sincere milk of the word. You, you check your NIV. You check your ESV. I think they take that out. A lot of the Bibles take out the sincere milk of the Word. Check that out. You don't believe me. In Peter. Go find it. Okay? Like, find Acts 8.37. Go ahead. Yeah, well, the original... Shut up. Shut up. Okay? Okay? Who are drawn from the breast? Those who are giving the sincere milk of the word. Saved people. Who depend on the word. Who trust on the word. Who believe the word. Okay? For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. You know, the Pharisees took note of John and Peter, who were unlearned and ignorant men, but they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. That they had been with Jesus. They weren't trained like Jesuits. Yeah, Jesuits went around that. You're missing the point of me just saying that. But they weren't trained by men. They weren't. They spent time with Jesus. Do you spend time with Jesus? The Lord is that spirit in the scriptures every day. Are you in the scriptures every day? Well, Brad, I got that. Shh. I, and my brethren know not to do this with me because I'm not. You, what, you, what are you going to do? You're going to give me an excuse why you aren't going to read the word? My, the brethren who I converse with and have fellowship with, they, they don't bring that up with me because I don't care who you are. I love you. And you bring that up to me about your excuses, I'll get right on your rear end about it. As I would expect them to do to me. Okay? But see, this is talking about someone who trusts the Lord, trusts the Word, the preserve given by inspiration, perfect, inerrant word, the authorized version. Okay, we looked at it. This is our standard where we judge ourselves and you too. Okay? We judge ourselves first and you too. Okay? Through this. All right? It's our life. The milk of the word. You know? Here's, here's, here's meat here is meat, milk, water, everything we need is here in the scriptures. Okay? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus who lives in the saved, born again, converted, saint, okay? Spirit of truth. He guides you into all truth. This is truth. This is the truth. Okay? <laughs> I, I don't trust my own judgment. I trust the Lord's judgment. This is my standard of judgment. I judge myself first. And I judge others. Why? Because my judgment is flawed. This isn't. You can trust this. 
But see, you give thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to a cemetery school and you come out with yea hath God said and your faith is shipwrecked. Verse 12 again. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Right here. And this is the refreshing, the sincere milk of the word. Yet they would not. But the word of the Lord was unto them a job. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward. And be broken and snared and taken. These people that go to these cemetery schools. They come out. Yea hath God said. They are their own standard. There is no perfect word. We have we can get close. But how do they determine that? Themselves. Themselves. They are their own God. Just like supposed atheists are. There's no such thing. Dear man. I, I, I. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? I mean, come on. Come on, dude. And more on this, and we've gone over this before, but like I said, this is a spur of the moment thing. Tomorrow, Lord willing, uh, it's got to be tomorrow, we'll go through Job. But John chapter 5, verses 38 under verse 47. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom, ye, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. But you go to a cemetery school, and you, well, what is his word? You know, the original, the Greek, the Hebrew, which one? The ones that were original, they don't exist. You know, some of you Christians who uh, adhere to that stupidity, pick one. Pick one, okay? If you're going to be like some of these idiots, well, the King James is the best we got, but it's not perfect. And they go, they use the, the Greek. Just go to hell, okay? But you know what? Pick one. Pick one. I would give more respect unto one of these so-called Christians if they would at least pick one. And you see these horrorish pastors who go through all these translations, that's whoredom. Pick one. Here. <laughs> Pick one and stick with it. Okay, at least. But no, yeah, has got that. They're after their father, the devil, in the whoredoms of Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And these guys think that just searching the scriptures themselves without, see, they already proved, the Pharisees, we already looked at it, they didn't believe what Moses wrote. And people like that uh, John Boshoff, who's burning in hell, um, said, went to this and said that you don't need the, the scriptures. No, you do. Okay? They, who Jesus is addressing, didn't believe the scriptures to begin with. Yet they were searching the scriptures without believing them. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Calvinist. Lutheranist or Lutheran, okay? Wesleyan. I'll let my enemy say the other one. Ruckmanite. Richlandite. Mm -hmm. Come in their own name. Okay? Yeah. How can ye believe? 
which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had, And see right here. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? See, these guys didn't believe the scriptures anyway. They just thought in the mechanical reading of the scriptures. Okay? Verse 13 in Isaiah 28. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. See, these guys don't believe the scriptures they're reading. Whereas in Isaiah 28, verses 9 on to verse 12, are describing those of us who believe the words of the Lord. Saved, sealed with the Lord himself. Being fed of the word. The other people, hey, it's a mechanical thing. Which you are getting from the cemetery schools, which produce atheists. Christian atheists. An atheist, there is no such thing. You are your own supreme intelligent being. I only had in my converse with some of the more civilized atheists, only one admit that to me. And I wish I would hear from that individual again. We had some glowing correspondence. And he admitted, yeah, I, I decide what is right and wrong. And he got it. I don't know what it came of him. But I was, yeah, I had a lot of respect for that guy. He got, he got it, and he admitted it. I got more respect for someone like that than one of these idiots. But see, in John chapter 5, Lord's not saying not to read the scriptures. They didn't believe the scriptures. And from a cemetery school, they, the guys that come out, they say, well, God, the Bible is God's word. Which one's perfect? Well, there's none. Per dude, dude, just, just go away. Take your paycheck and just stuff it. Never mind. Hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell we are we at agreement. And the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies a refuge. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. They have God said, You are your own God. Evolution, Christianity, name it. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? What do you think Satan is doing through the cemetery schools? What do you think Satan is doing in education in general? He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. Hmm. Yeah. And see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17, on to verse 21, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17, on to 21, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, yea, hath God said, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us which are saved 
Check the Bible. It says being saved, doesn't it? It is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Yeah. See, in Judges 17, dear friend, we see this exemplified. Okay? The mother of Micah messed him up. He had a house of gods. And then he goes and gets a Levite and makes him his priest to basically tell him what he wants to hear. He was his own God, even though he had a house of gods. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And see, atheism exalts self. Atheists are selfieists. <laughs> that's a good one, brother. I like that. That's And that's it. Atheists are selfieists. That's it. That's it. Want to see a contrast to this now? 1 Samuel chapter 2. We're almost done. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verses 1 on verse 10. Another woman. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Now the mother of Micah, she was talking about the Lord, but what happened? She took silver and made a graven image. And Micah came out with the house of gods. And he was so deluded in his lacabesa that, you know, I, God will do me good because I got a Levite to me for my priest. My priest. Yeah. Yeah. Micah was messed up. And of course, that very Levite you were to continue in Judges would go on to be one of the one of the many things that messed up the tribe of Dan. Okay, but let's continue. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more exceeding proudly. I decide what is right and wrong. I'm an atheist. No, you're not. You are your own God. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord God, for the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. And we already checked that out in James. What knowledge? A knowledge that is predicated off of wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, or that which is first earthly, sensual, and devilish. What knowledge? Hmm? The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that, they that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased. So that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. Think about that. We are the few. We are dependent on the Lord. Christianity is huge. They are of the masses. We're not. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low, and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. And for us today, us Gentiles, being without hope and without God, in this dispensation, making of uh, twain one new man in Christ, grafting us Gentiles into the tree of the Jew, the Hebraic people. Hmm? He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. 
Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. See the contrast between Hannah and the mother of Micah? The mother of Micah who messed up Micah. Made a, he made a house of gods. I was so deluded thinking that he could have his own personal priest. Where Hannah, the mother of um, Samuel, who gave Samuel on to the Lord. See, the mother of Micah there is a type of of that wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. And Hannah in this is a type of that wisdom that is peaceable, which is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated. You get it? First Corinthians, go back to First Corinthians chapter one. Okay? This you know, we've gone through this before, but like I said, um, that I had to I had to, <laughs> you know. Oh, I have got this video for Job. But anyway, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 23, on to the close. But we who are actually saved preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. And you see the sleazy believism heretic, they decide what is right and what is wrong. They decide when they are saved by what they do. A mental ascent. But unto them which are called the way of the cross, not Calvinism, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty, not many noble are called. Why? It says not many. doesn't mean that they can't come. Well, why aren't many called? Because they have too many things that they can fall back onto and puff themselves up. Okay? But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The saints are the foolish things of this world. Okay? And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. I said, I said the same things, dear young brother. Got to be careful. The Lord might just take you kicking and screaming. Love you, brother. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not. To bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You who call yourself atheists, you're glorying in yourself because you are your own God. There is no such thing as an atheist. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 on to verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Oh, that's happening in an abundance. But though we are in an angel from heaven, Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. Yeah, because he preaches another Jesus. And we, as we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Remember the young Levite with Micah? Man-pleasing? But I certify, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. And you gotta remember, okay? Now look, 
Okay, if someone wa if someone wants to learn how to take someone's spleen out of their body or something, like a doctor, y yeah, y you need to get trained on how to do surgery. Okay, sure. If you you know to fix vehicles, you should be trained on how to fix a vehicle. I'm not talking about that, okay? But things pertaining to life, get them out of school. Here, you want things pertaining to real life? The authorized version of the scriptures. Here's your textbook. This is more. This is more than a textbook. This is life. Okay. Paul, who went from a murderer to messenger, he was trained by the best. Okay. Philippians three verses seven on to verse eleven. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness of God which is by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. How many of these people that pay, you, you paid money to these people to go to a cemetery school to learn, yea hath God said, and have your faith that might have been there crushed by Satan, and yea hath God said. Through what? Through what? Colossians 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. A. For some, some people, you can give them evidence, like we've talked about, they're just not going to get it. They're not, they don't want it. They want to believe they are their own gods. Okay, like I said, I have respect for those who at least say that, who admit that. You know, I'll give them respect. You know, I'll say, hey, at least you admit it. You know, but um, there's no such thing as an atheist. You're not an atheist. You may say you are, but you're not an atheist. You are. That's going to be it for this off-the-cuff, spur-of-the-moment video. Thank you for watching this if you do. See you in the next video.